from the Computer Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2015, brought to you by Mirantis. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Brick. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE. We are live in Silicon Valley, right? One exit from our Palo Alto office. This is SiliconANGLE's flagship program, theCUBE, where we go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm here with Jeff Frick, and we're for the second year of coverage of the new emerging, fast-growing event called OpenStack Silicon Valley. We call it hashtag OpenStack SV. Uh, the hashtag for this show is hashtag OSSV15 and uh, come join the conversation, check it out. This is where infrastructure is being unlocked. That is the theme, and our next guest is Alex Friedland with Mirantis, who's the chairman, co-founder of Mirantis. Uh, welcome back to theCUBE, congratulations. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, good to be two, here. On two fronts, congratulations on a uh, very successful event that you guys pioneered last year by seeing a void in the market here in Silicon Valley where there are a lot of players, certainly Intel, Google, right here in our backyard, and of course the CUBE office in Palo Alto. Um, is where the action is, and there was no event. You guys really spent your own cash, funded it, brought the community together as an open community event. Congratulations again, huge Thank buzz, you. packed. Soon this is going to go to Moscone uh, or <laughs> San Jose, it's so crowded, can't even find a parking spot. And secondly, congratulations on the funding. $100 million of fresh, fat financing, as they say. Give us a story. Funding, and we'll get to the <laughs> keynote in a minute. Funding, use of funds, Intel's a new partner. Yes, Why the success? Why the tracker? Obviously, they're re-upping a lot of you know a lot of successful endorsement validation. Give us the update. Well, thank you. No, this is uh, great news, and uh, this is great news for the industry. This is great news for um, for Mirantis, of course. But uh, um, kind of a precursor. It all started with Intel kind of stepping up and becoming a platinum member of OpenStack Foundation, and uh, it was a message that for Intel, which is the foundation of the scale out. Um, hardware architecture for the cloud, OpenStack is a very, very important um, um, you know, layer, right, that will unlock the software-defined uh, infrastructure. So Intel, in their cloud for all, is trying to make cloud easily accessible for tens of thousands of customers, and OpenStack is an integral part of that strategy. So it's great news for OpenStack, you know, as a uh, director of the foundation, I was there yeah. when um, Intel was selected, and Intel is putting money where their mouth is. Yeah, I saw Diane so. Bryan here from Intel. So you get the big dogs are here, it's awesome. She's amazing, I hope to get her on theCUBE. Right. Uh, let's talk about this event and OpenStack and what you guys are talking about on stage. Obviously the theme seems to be, hey, forget infrastructure as a service, forget platform as a service. This is now about growth, maturity. Correct. Some core things are nailed down, solid, and emerging. Things are getting steamed, the projects are growing. The same trajectory as Amazon Web Services. Some basic building blocks, yes. and things are moving fast. That's What's right. the update? Well, um, you've seen reports uh, coming from the analysts. So Forrester has just signaled that OpenStack in the minds of uh, the CIOs worldwide is emerging as the fifth platform for the cloud computing transformation. So you know the three platforms on the public side, which is Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. And on the, on the private side, it's essentially VMware and OpenStack. So for, you know, as far as customers are concerned, they don't care about infrastructure or platform, they want a platform that will usher them to the cloud, that will work, that will give them scalability, and they can just use with ease. And that's the challenge of OpenStack. It's gotten the mind share, now it needs to have the, you know, the scale, the robustness and the partnerships to take it to the level where it's a full stack so customers can rely on it for their cloud journeys. Yeah, I said on the intro, Jeff and I were kind of kicking off the event, they got a marketing problem because it's hard to market what OpenStack is holistically, a lot of greatness and there's a lot of different players involved, a lot of different savings, but it's not just OpenStack in a box. I mean, you guys have done a lot of great things there. It's a platform that works depending upon, the, in the eye of the beholder and the use cases, so talk about that dynamic, the platform of OpenStack and this workability, the viability. Correct. Well, um, I mean, there is, there is an economic uh, question that has to be solved, right? So uh, Amazon and Google and other hyperscalers are doing amazing innovation and in creating a very wonderful experience of sending workloads to the public clouds. So companies are grappling with an answer, what should be the on-prem answer, because if that answer is, doesn't exist, it needs to be as good, as useful, and as competitive financially, then all the workloads will end up moving into the hyperscalers, and the whole computing industry 
will become similar to what we have with the power industry. So it will be an oligopoly of just a few players. And the whole vibrant ecosystem of innovators that has been driving computer industry for the last 50 years will actually be at risk. So there's a lot of people who are very interested in having an open platform where the innovation can flow freely, that customers can consume, and have their workloads running on them without thinking whether it's on public cloud, private cloud, whatever, that is open and allows for world innovation to come in. That's why in only five years, OpenStack has become such a popular platform. That's why it has all those backers, because for them, OpenStack is important for their viability, and it's now the time for all those people to come in together and to continue growing OpenStack into the platform that could be easily consumed. And that's, you know, that's a transformation from a toddler that says, will you be alive, to what does it take in the next 18 months to become the, you know, the platform that everybody can easily consume. I was going to say, what's interesting is the first wave of innovators, a lot of them have been, have been gobbled up by the big guys. So it's interesting that they, they had successful exits and the big guys saw the value and are bringing them in. Right. And they're not just squishing them, they're not no. sucking them in and they're going exactly. away. And so I think it's pretty clear that, that large enterprise software companies now have, have figured out open source as a place they need to be. Absolutely. And now you're seeing a kind of a next gen of um, startups coming up. Platform 9, where you know, kind of the next generation of tools and services to support this growing right. infrastructure. So exactly it seems right. to be very vibrant and it's just kind of going through these little growth cycles. So um, this is actually, yes, it's a very important comment. So the fact that the young startups who innovated in the um, uh, early OpenStack space, they were purchased by large companies who understand that OpenStack is the vehicle through which they can market and sell their diverse technologies. And those are Cisco's, EMC's, and IBM's. They see the value of OpenStack. It's critical to their success. What's interesting is that Mirantis is the only company out there of scale that has a different agenda. The agenda of Mirantis as a company is to make OpenStack to just be the great platform. We don't have any other products we want to sell through OpenStack. We don't compete with any of our community partners. Uh, we just care about OpenStack as the first class platform that customers can see use interchangeably with uh, Amazon and VMware and everything else. And I believe that the industry needs an independent and scalable player like this who just has OpenStack's agenda in mind. And by the way, the Intel deal, one of the reasons we were selected as such is because we are a very powerful community player and our agenda, like Intel's, is aligned with the whole industry. We don't have, you know, uh, as a pure play um, OpenStack vendor, we are kind of, you know, in, in many ways, in many people's minds, you know, becoming synonymous with OpenStack itself. And we are the best partner to kind of drive innovation inside of OpenStack and take no favorites. So it's very important that there is at least one player like that. Yeah, absolutely. And I wonder if you can delve into a little bit some of the, the structure within the, the Intel agreement. Obviously, it's a lot more than just than writing a check. What are some Correct. of the, the, the partnership or, that's always a tricky word to use in, in the tech, but what are some of the, 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 the structure of what you guys are doing together now that you've announced this deal? Of so um, the deal consists of two parts, as you saw. One is the collaboration co-development agreement, and under that, um, essentially, we shared with Intel the roadmap that we see for OpenStack in multiple areas, in the areas of um, uh, workload um, high availability, uh, scalability, um, in the area of operational tooling, um, and um, you know storage and network scalability and functionality. And we explained to Intel a kind of our vision of what needs to happen for enterprises to be able to consume uh, OpenStack at scale. And when we compared our visions, we were about 85% the same. So Intel that is interested in OpenStack becoming you know, faster, uh, the robust platform for enterprises, they said, what can we do to get this done faster, right? And so we had an agreement where they will put a lot of resources on their end, they will fund some of our resources, you know, to put into the community to expedite this, and um, also they would give us uh, uh, access to the interoperability labs, to their own roadmaps of where they're, where they're going as far as their uh, rack scale architecture and, and things of that nature, so that OpenStack can truly become the first class citizen uh, working on top of uh, Intel-based commodity gear. 
So I got to ask you the question about the uh, cloud evolution. Obviously, hybrid cloud, I asked Pat Gelsinger three years ago at VMware, VMworld, um, is hybrid cloud a halfway house between public and private cloud? And he was adamant, halfway house, they're betting their strategy on hybrid cloud. Um, he called it a way station, it may be halfway house is probably mm -hmm. not an accurate word, but way station, um, a stopping ground between the ultimate destination. So I want to get your take. Does hybrid cloud exist as a category? Is it just a term used to bridge the gap between ultimately what people are doing, which is private cloud and public cloud and moving workloads? I want to get your take. What is hybrid cloud? Does it really exist? So I think the answer to this question depends on who is asking. If you ask the infrastructure people, they will give you technology definition of what the private cloud is, and from that perspective, yes, technologists have um, you know, a, a strategy how to instrument for the private cloud, quote unquote. If you ask customers, customers look at it very, very differently. Customers understand that infrastructure can be consumed as a product or as a service, so it's ca uh, CapEx versus an OpEx discussion, and then they want to see uh, workloads to freely move from all the platforms that they use uh, independently of they're paid for by CapEx or OpEx. So customers just think of cloud as a, as a notion, and all they care about is workload portability and the best economic equation of how those workloads can be housed. So customers assume that cloud is going to be portable, but engineers have to design it such that the hybrid story can be engineered so the customers get their portability. So the bottom line, what you're saying is customers really don't care how you define it. Correct. They pay for things, either CapEx or OpEx. Correct. That's how they buy. Yeah. And two, their ultimate goal is workload mobility. Correct. So Correct. whatever you want to call that, it's going to sit on whatever infrastructure that That's fits exactly how they right. buy economics. And for cloud, this is table stakes. And unless we can, we as the greater cloud ecosystem can deliver that value to customers, you know, cloud, you know, cloud is not going to be successful, but it's happening. And the interesting thing is, with OpenStack being kind of the orchestrator, an agnostic and open orchestrator, it's in the best position to be viewed by customers as the independent control plane, you know, to really orchestrate all the workloads between, you know, different platforms. So in addition to being the platform itself, it's also, a, you know, the best orchestration platform with all the players kind of helping to make their own platform the, you know, the first class citizen. So, I got to ask you the question, VMworld's coming up, obviously they have a cloud, Microsoft has a cloud, Google has a cloud. What is the impact of cloud and virtualization, cloud engines and virtualization, to converge infrastructure and some of the things that are going on in official enterprises? What's the bottom line from a customer standpoint? Well, so, um, if you ask customers, ultimately, Customers want to be separated from all of those decisions, right? They want to be able to run their workloads wherever they run, manage the workloads wherever they manage, and then have the, the most advanced, the easiest uh, experience using it and the compelling economics, right? So cloud as a movement provides the layer of abstraction and gives assurance that customers can have what they have. And then it actually puts an onus on the vendors to prove you know, at any point of the decision making that their solution, A, is compliant to the standard interface and B, is competitive price-wise, feature-wise, and all that. So it kind of changes the game where customers become in control, whereas vendors have to prove to customers at any given point uh, that they are the best, the best to breed. Where before, once the customer kind of selected the vendor, they would get locked into the stack. And this is the major difference. Uh, and that's, by the way, the only difference, the only way for computing industry to survive against the alternative of just purely public cloud providers who just make all the economics just so much more compelling. So final question I want to ask you uh, in two parts. First one is, um, what is the uh, impact to the customers now in OpenStack? How do they join in? Let's just say this, when people on the fence, maybe doing some experimentation, sure. what do they do? How do they get involved? How do they navigate the signal for this versus the noise? Oh, well, there are many different ways, right? So, uh, more techie customers have always been trying to kind of do it themselves and, uh, um, and also trying to, you know, to, to innovate in the community and that's always a way and there are multiple ways to do it, you know, with the foundation, the upstream group and, you know, there are many ways. 
uh, there is a number of um, distributions that now are becoming point and click. You put it on your laptop, you click and it installs, or you can put it on a cluster and it works. And um, um, you know, players like Mirantis also have the unlocked um, appliances, which means if you're a larger company and you want to consume it like you would a Nutanix box, you come in, you know, buy it from one of the SIs, put it in the data center, press a button, and you have yourself a developer cloud. Okay, we're getting um, out of time here. Final, final question, yes. real quickly. <laughs> as you put this event together, look at the themes, looking at the actual attendance, looking at the keynotes and the themes for the show. What is this show, Silicon Valley, all about? OpenStack Silicon Valley all about? How would you break down the vibe, the focus, and sure. the overall mojo of this event? So, I call it a, like, a mid-cycle business event. The things are moving so fast that six months cadence is not enough, and so the mid-cycle event has a lot of demand. But the most important theme about this event is that we're not here to discuss infrastructure anymore, we're here to discuss the full solution for the customers and what other partnerships we need to bring into the mind share that OpenStack has gained to really build a full solution so customers can have it as a first class platform for their cloud journey. How well is OpenStack accepted in Silicon Valley in your opinion? Well, considering how oversubscribed this event is, I think Silicon Valley loves OpenStack. Alex, thanks for joining us right. here inside theCUBE. Alex Friedland is uh, co-founder and, and chairman of the board of Mirantis, fresh off the $100 million funding, strategic relationship with Intel, leader in OpenStack. This is theCUBE covering OpenStack Silicon Valley live here in Silicon Valley, our home. We'll be right back after this short break.